morning. This is Dr. Vidal, and uh, today we will talk about mechanics of writing. The last session we talked about uh, the general characteristics of a good research problem, and today we will talk about uh, the more specific guidelines, particularly in uh, the uh, preparation of title for the investigation and uh, looking into the more specific mechanics in the writing of the subtopics in chapter one. So let's start with the specific guidelines relative to the title of the research study. Please note that the following characteristics would uh, best describe a good research title. Number one, it is clear, descriptive, and correctly worded. Remember that the title of an investigation is the summary of the entire report or the entire text. Therefore, it is essential that the uh, title of the investigation would put across a very clear message, especially to your audience or your readers, such that the uh, words or terms that are to be placed in the title would best describe what the intention of the research team is in so far as the conduct of the investigation is concerned. And we must note that the words or the terms that we use are in accordance with the field of specialization that we are pursuing. Number two, it is reasonably short but comprehensible. But the question is, how short is short? Always remember the principle of brevity whenever we provide the title of the investigation. As a matter of general rule, a 10 to 15 succinct words would best uh, comprise a good research title. So that is 10 to 15 succinct words. What is meant by succinct words? These are the main terms or the words that you use and in the counting of the 10 to 15 words, we do not include prepositions, articles, connectors, and the like. Number three, it must be printed in an inverted pyramid format. What is meant by inverted pyramid format? So at this point in time, I'd like to give to you an example of a title that is following what we call as inverted pyramid format. Take a look at what we have on this slide. The title of the investigation as proposed is Fiscal Management in the Barangays of the Gupan City. In cases where the title of the investigation cannot be placed in just one line, you will need to split this title into several lines such that the first line is the longest and the last line the shortest and that would resemble much of what we call as the inverted pyramid so this is an example of an inverted pyramid moving on still on the title of the investigation we must remember that uh, in order to have a very clear understanding of the research investigation, we must not employ wording of an unscientific, rhetorical, emotional, or biased character or catchy title. The uh, research report is a technical report and the words that uh, we place part of the title should be that which will reflect the research objective and on the basis of the field of endeavor or the discipline of study. So if, for example, we're talking about accountancy thesis or business research, we will have to frame our title on the basis of accountancy or business lingo respectively. Number five, phrases like a critical study, an evaluation, an assessment, a study before the problem area is inappropriate. We 
goes straight to what the variable of the study is or what the variable of the study are and if we are still uh, uh, to place say for example this phrases as critical study or analysis we do it by having to place it after a column okay so that is for the fifth item example the study pertaining to the earlier example given relative to correlation study dealing with academic studying in college and the CPA licensure examination performance of the ULPSA graduates. This is the main problem. Okay? And uh, we place a correlation or an analysis okay, after the colon and after the problem area. So this is relative to item number five. So this in totality are the things that we need to consider in so far as the writing of the title of investigation is concerned. Should you have any problems? Should you have any concerns? Should you want to raise points of clarifications? All you have to do is to write it down in your notebooks today and have this discussed to me as soon as we meet in person. Okay, so for now, let us proceed to the subtopics under chapter one. So, based on the UL prescribed format, we will prepare a five chapter report. The five chapter rep report will consist of the following. We have for the first chapter, with the title, The Problem and Its Background, and with the following subtopics. So the subtopics of the first chapter as, are, are as follows. We have rationale, theoretical conceptual framework, statement of the problem, assumptions, hypotheses, scope and delimitation, significance of the study, and definition of terms. Please note, however, that of these eight subtopics, there are five mandatory subtopics for the undergraduate thesis. And these are, number one, rationale, statement of the problem, scope and delimitation, significance of the study, and definition of terms. The three others are optional, meaning that depending on the method that you will have to employ, you will be asked to add to the five earlier mentioned the following. We have the theoretical or conceptual framework, the uh, assumptions of the study, and of course, the hypothesis of the study. But please remember that even in uh, cases involving reports not dealing with theoretical and conceptual framework as a separate subheading or subtitle under the first chapter, theories and concepts that serve as the premise for the conduct of the study are already made part of the rationale. This I will have to discuss in particular as soon as we get to the details of the rationale. So that's for the first chapter. So the second chapter is the review of related literature and studies. The review of related literature and studies will be divided into two parts. The first is the conceptual literature, also known as related literature, and the second would be your research literature, also known as related studies. So these are the two parts of the second chapter of the UL prescribed report. Chapter three is research design. Research design would cover the following subtopics. So we have research method used, locale of the study, subject slash respondents of the study, referring to the population or the sample as the case may be. And then we have instrumentation. Instrumentation would cover the discussion of what instrument or data gathering tool you will use and how you will have to establish the validity and reliability of your instruments. And then we also have data gathering procedure and finally we have treatment of data. Remember that there are two types of data 
that you may be dealing with. First is the quantitative data, and the other we have the qualitative data. If you would, for example, be dealing with quantitative data, it is important that you have to have discussion pertaining to statistical tools or statistical treatment. Hence, your side head title, Statistical Treatment of Data. Then comes chapter four. Chapter four is the presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. For this particular chapter, topics or side head titles would be dependent on the statement of the sub-problems or specific problems in the first chapter. So we will not be able to identify uh, this early what we have for subtopic titles in the fourth chapter. And the last, we have for chapter five, we have summary conclusions and recommendations. For the fifth chapter, uh, there are three uh, subsections. The first subsect, uh, section is the uh, summary of significant findings. Number two, we have conclusions. And number three, we have recommendations. So these are the five chapters of the UL prescribed report. However, if in the College of Business ad, HRM, or Tourism, you would be venturing into what we call as feasibility studies, the chapter may be revised a bit, such that we have for the third chapter the first aspect of feasibility study, which is management, and followed by marketing, then technical, fourth we have financial, and lastly we have socio-economic aspect. So this would be for a feasibility study. Now let's go back to chapter one, the problem and its background, and looking into the more specific items under the first chapter. So the first subtopic is your rationale. So the rationale of the study is your introduction or overview as this will discuss to you the background of the problem. And uh, in most researchers, particularly employing the descriptive type, we will be observing what we call as the deductive reasoning style of exposition. What is the deductive reasoning style of exposition? The deductive reasoning is a type of developing your discussion of the problem background by firstly introducing the global perspective to explain in more specific terms, what the study in the local setting is all about. So we will have to describe the problem situation from the global or national level down to the local or institutional level and thus following a micro to mi macro to micro description. And that's what we mean by deductive presentation. In the course of presentation, we will also Note of the significance of uh, anchoring your problem background to certain theories or concepts okay, as the anchorage of the study. And when we talk about theoretical or conceptual framework, we will be noting, say, for example, of legal evidence, documents consisting of, say, for example, constitution, statutes, executive orders, and the like and as much as possible have this as frame of reference for the conduct of the study. So the researcher or the research team must indicate what is wrong. Noting of the very meaning of research, which is to search again, meaning that research is an attempt to know more about a particular topic. And this would bring us back to our previous discussion that topics in research need not be necessarily new. For as long as we have identified certain aspect of the topic that will add up to what is already known. And uh, after having described the issue or concern, then we will note of 
what do we have in mind after dealing with this problem? Such that we will note of how do we intend to improve or strengthen or enrich the problem situation. So that would form part of the rationale. So the researcher should justify his or her study and show why the study is needed. It is very essential to note of why of the so many possible topics the research team chose to venture into this particular topic or title proposal. Let us give example. Number one example for accountancy students and accounting technology students. The uh, proposed title is Financial Management or Fiscal Management in the Barangays of the Guban City. So how are we going to present the problem background? In the presentation of the problem background, it is essential for the writers or the research team to be guided by an outline of presentation. This is the reason why you will be asked to perform activity number seven, which is all about developing topic outline for the background of the problem. Allow me then to give to you okay, a tentative outline of discussion relative to the topic proposal. As the title proposal is all about fiscal or financial management, we would then commence with having to define what is meant by the variable. The variable of the study is fiscal management of the barangays in the Guban city. So let's start with defining what is financial management or fiscal management and its definitions and placing emphasis on the principles and concepts of financial management. As we deal with certain principles and concepts, we will also be noting of the differences in terms of the application of these concepts in the public and in the private uh, practice of financial management. And this would then give us the springboard for discussion of concentrating primarily on fiscal management as applied in the public setting. And from there, we will now be able to discuss international standards, regional, national, and local rules and regulations that which pertain to the application of fiscal management concepts and principles in the public setting. And this would now be the uh, leverage okay, for the introduction of the problem of the study, noting of what issues or concerns you would want to concentrate on for this particular undertaking. And this you will do by determining the extent of the issue or concern. And this is done by number one, providing statistics. The statistics that would best capture okay, the extent of the problem area. You may also, in the process of determining the extent of issue or concern, by presenting proofs or pieces of evidence to substantiate your claims or premises that you have presented. And then give inferences that are backed up by valid support. And summing up all your preliminary discussions, it would now then would lead you to what we term as your clinching paragraph or clinching statement. The clinching paragraph would summarize The uh, discussions that you have for the first paragraph and up to the last paragraph dealing with the background of the problem and giving an answer to the basic question, what gave the researchers or the research team the impetus to coming up with this research study? So here you will have to highlight your intention as a research team, thus describing what you have in mind for your purpose of this study and 
discussing the significance of this investigation. So this, in summation, okay, is all about your rationale. Are there any questions? So should there be questions relative to the writing of the rationale, all you have to do is to send me a private message. Remember that we have our FB group, and I would like to ask those who have not members with our FB group to please find some time of your busy schedule to member with the research online bulletin for this semester. Okay? Please be guided accordingly. So from rationale, let's move on to statement of the problem. So let's go back to our previous okay, PowerPoint presentation, now dealing with statement of the problem. So specifically for the statement of the problem subtopic in the first chapter, for the UL format, we will be observing two sections. So the first part would be dealing with the general problem statement. And this general problem statement will be the basis of the second part, which is your sub-problem part or the specific problem part of the statement of the problem. Note that the general or the major problem, okay, which actually is patterned from your research title, would be written in a narrative form or declarative manner, indicating among others what is the study all about, who are involved in this study, where is the investigation conducted, and what's the period covered in the study or when, and sometimes we will be dealing with the question pertaining to why. Why did you do this particular study? So the general problem is capable of being broken down into more specific units of analysis, and this is the basis for identifying what specific questions or sub-problems may be addressed okay, relative to your main problem statement. So this part of the statement of the problem will be written in an interrogative manner, which is, of course, a, uh, started by what we call as introductory sentence. So this will be your guide in the writing of your statement of the problem. So let us give example of uh, statement of the problem based on the earlier example given. The earlier example given is fiscal management in the barangays of the Gupan City. So here is your main problem statement relative to the example given. So you may be referring to what you have on the slide, for example, of the first part of the statement of the problem indicating your research objective. The research objective is to uh, have the basis for the formulation of action plan okay, in accelerating barangay level development and focusing on the efficiency of the barangays in terms of fiscal administration. Remember that this main problem statement would lead you to more specific units of analysis which you can have in terms of a specific problem. So these are the specific problems relative to the main problem statement. So to attain the foresighted purpose, the study will be addressing the following specific problems. Number one, what is the status of fiscal management in the barangays of the Bupan City along two aspects? Number one, we have revenue generation, and number two, 
revenue allocation and utilization. Question, where did you base the first sub-problem from? The answer is from the main problem statement. So when we talk about financial or fiscal management, we would be dealing essentially with what income will be generated and how the income generated will be utilized. Hence, two aspects, revenue generation and revenue allocation, which is budgeting and revenue utilization. Second sub-problem, all about problems. So after having assessed the status, having measured the extent of efficiency when it comes to fiscal management, then we will now look at measuring seriousness of problems that are faced by barangay fiscal managers in the barangays of the Gupan City. So that would be for your second sub-problem. And on the basis of the first sub-problem and the second sub-problem, now comes your sub-problem number three. Your sub-problem number three okay, is what plan of action could be formulated to improve the existing fiscal administration of barangays in the Gupa City. So, talking about status and the problems alongside fiscal management, then we can now devise ways or mechanisms or measures by which to enrich the way finances are managed in the barangay the governments in the city of the Gupa. So that is an example relating to the statement of the problem under the first chapter. Let's give another example. So as the first example deals with more or less a topic in accounting or accounting technology, let's take a look at a business research example. So for this particular example, it would be dealing with the business operation of Resort XYZ in the Gupan City. Again, as a way of review, title is to be formatted, guided by the so-called inverted pyramid form. So let's go to the details of this example. So let's start with the possible outline for discussion of the rationale. So since the discussion is all about the operation of a business entity based on the uh, experience of Resort XYZ in the Gupa City, we will have part of the discussion on the background of the problem. The discussion of general principles and concepts underpinning business resort operation. So alongside the discussion of the principles and concepts relative to business resort operation, we will be noting of what trends are developing or what are the emerging trends worldwide and regional wide okay, in terms of business or resort operation. And then this will now be our basis of discussing the national situation on business or resort operation and further identifying the issues and the concerns. And this will now be the uh, springboard for discussion of the local situation. Noting of how the resort operation in the province of Pangasinan and the city of Tagupan is at the moment. And then 